Good evening. My name is Michael Lonsborough, and it's a big pleasure and a delight for me to welcome you on behalf of Czech Centres London to the latest AI, that's Artificial Intelligence, Science Café. So the AI Science Café is a series of Science Café which have been set up by the Czech Centres uh, in London in cooperation with the Royal Institution. And so far it's covered a series of AI topics including personal and cyber security, autonomous mobility, robotics and wildlife preservation. But today's presentation will be on conversational AI. So this is particularly interesting to me as I'm beginning to use this particular technology myself with my mobile telephone. So when I need to know where is the nearest Italian restaurant or when does the next train to Prague leave or what is the score in the game, I ask my phone often and it gives an answer which is rather impressive. So all these are questions uh, we're increasingly using our, our devices, our robots, mobiles and others, and, and not only for factual questions, but even for opinions. Uh, or I can even ask it for a joke. Could you tell me a joke, please? What do you call a can opener that doesn't work? A can't opener. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> so, uh, leading the development of this technology is a man that I have with me today, uh, Mr. Dr. Jan Shedevi. Uh, who's going to be telling us more about conversational AI. Uh, Jan has led uh, many worldwide research and development projects. Uh, he was a principal designer at IBM. He holds 19 US patents. Um, his areas in the, the field are, are numerous, and he's currently a faculty supervisor of uh, Alquist AI here in Prague. So, Jan, welcome. Good evening. Uh, good evening. So I'm very much looking forward to, to learning more about how this technology works and what are the implications of this um, gaining momentum that you're developing in this technology. And maybe we'll have time as well to discuss what the future might hold for our conversations that we do have with our mobile telephones, our cars, our, our robots. Um, something about the structure of this evening. Uh, later on, Jan and I will be talking about these very questions and matters. And then also you'll have an opportunity to write in with your own questions, which Jan has agreed very kindly to answer. Uh, but before we begin uh, that part of the discussion, we will start with a presentation uh, from Jan, uh, about 20 minutes long, where you can introduce the subject the, yourself and your, your current uh, progress. So Jan, I'm going to hand over to you, and the floor is yours for 20 minutes. <clears throat> uh, very good. So I will start with the presentation, which will give you the basic idea about uh, the technology, and then I will talk a little bit about our project, which is called Alquist. Actually, the name Alquist is the name of a character from the Karel Chapek's uh, play, Are You Aware? Rosum's Universal Robots. So uh, the title of the presentation is Alquist, The Social Bot. And uh, first of all, uh, let me tell you something about the advances or the recent advances uh, in AI, specifically uh, about speech recognition and text-to-speech, because conversational AI is about the most natural uh, way of interacting or communicating, which is obviously language. Uh, when we talk, uh, we are learning the most, or the talk is uh, giving us uh, many more aspects of uh, uh, human beings, how the people behave, about their emotions and so on. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have this information in our bots. Uh, we are limited to ASR and uh, speech. Uh, since I was uh, part of the uh, whole a development of speech recognition from the very, very early beginnings. Uh, I was around when we put on the market the first uh, dictation system and then uh, I was uh, the key developer or the key designer of one of the first uh, car assistants, uh, which was uh, even in the early 90s already capable of recognizing uh, some uh, very simple commands or some very very simple uh, questions, which was uh, all, all the speech recognition that time was in uh, its infancy and uh, 
uh, speech recognition error rates were very high. Uh, for example, for the dictation, which is uh, which emerged like uh, 95. Uh, we had to use isolated words, so we had to make uh, spaces between words so as the system understands. Uh, I would say that uh, one of the newest uh, approaches or one of the newest applications was uh, Google search, uh, which is or voice search, which surprisingly enough uh, was first launched on iPhones uh, because it was launched before uh, Arc uh, before Android was actually uh, put on the market and then uh, after Android emerged, uh, then there were other systems like Google Now. And in 2016-14, uh, uh, the first uh, versions of uh, Alexa uh, and uh, then uh, later on uh, Google Home intelligent speakers uh, were put on, put on the market. And these intelligent speakers, this is already the latest uh, technology uh, which is based on the very recent improvements in speech recognition around 2013-14 uh, we discovered new ways how to use neural networks and the huge amount of uh, computational power as well as huge amounts of data we collected on the internet from the users uh, this was the enabler uh, to create better speech recognition Google, for example, these days claims uh, that they have the accuracy like 94% uh, uh, on many different devices. And this is uh, according to what Google says, and this is probably in double quotes or we have always questioned it, but it's uh, uh, one percentage better than average person. So the speech recognition made uh, a tremendous progress, uh, but uh, as you would ex expect or as you would guess, uh, obviously the system are still uh, making uh, problems or making errors. And uh, the last two lines on this slide are showing uh, uh, the very latest uh, advances in speech recognition, which we address as uh, conversational AI. and. Uh, Last line talks about uh, our contribution, and this is the system or uh, the social bot called Alquist, and I will be talking about it soon. On this picture, uh, there are the two major devices. Actually, both of them are uh, more, uh, less than one month old. On the left-hand side, we can see the Amazon Echo, and Amazon was pioneer. Uh, in these uh, intelligent speakers. And on the right-hand side, we have Nest Audio, uh, which is a successor of uh, Google Home. They actually renamed the whole brand, and it's now uh, closer to the very successful uh, Nest Thermostat. And uh, on the next picture, I, I, I have something which is uh, showing the popularity or uh, the size uh, of uh, customers who use these devices, as we can see, uh, Alexa was very strong in the early beginnings, and uh, as soon as Google joined, it started to grab uh, a little bit larger and larger uh, piece of the pie, and these days uh, uh, they are uh, a real competitor to Alexa, even though I would say that uh, Amazon as well as Alexa are approaching the field slightly differently or are going in a slightly different uh, direction. So we'll see how the things will evolve. Certainly uh, all us uh, working in conversational AI, especially in academia, uh, we would be happy if we had one standard and not too many standards, uh, because uh, having one standard, uh, many people can contribute and uh, reuse uh, the standard uh, in a form of API, for example, for third parties' devices or built on top of a single infrastructure. Uh, such standard is, for example, GSM worldwide. You have GSM phones and you can use it everywhere. So the next slides are showing us uh, what are the applications or uh, what is uh, most frequently or for what are most frequently these intelligent speakers used by our uh, customers. So uh, one of the 
very important or one of the starting uh, idea was uh, answering uh, factoid questions and uh, as uh, you would see or as you would guess uh, this uh, is uh, I think uh, which we thought uh, will be very frequent one, but uh, the latest studies or the market says that it's probably the third place because the most frequently used application is to play music like Spotify or <coughs> Amazon uh, Music, etc. The second one seems to be these days using these uh, voice uh, intelligent speakers for uh, controlling uh, home devices, which is usually advertised under the I IoT Internet of Things uh, acronym. And uh, obviously, uh, you can imagine that uh, in some cases it might be uh, good help if you go to your garage and you can say, open the door, because before it rolls up, it takes some time, so you can shorten the time, or if you go to cellar, which is dark, so you may say in advance, uh, uh, say something like, uh, turn on the lights in the cellar, but uh, uh, in the everyday life, like getting to the kitchen or to your living room and saying, uh, turn on the lights, or uh, preceded by Alexa or Google Home doesn't seem to be handy, so I am sure that there will be still strong development in this direction and uh, we would be able to use uh, very short commands to uh, turn on the lights or adjust the temperature in the room, etc. So this is definitely one of the areas where we will see big progress. The last line uh, shows that uh, these days we have also a lot of applications which are a sort of conversational one and uh, you can install them and then you can talk to uh, Alexa or Google about uh, basketball or about, uh, I don't know, psychological therapy, etc. Uh, there are like a hundred thousand of them, so the discoverability is a big problem to find what you really want or what you really enjoy is not simple. And now I will start to talk about uh, our social bot Analquist. Actually, in the background, uh, you can see our National Technical Library, which is a great building. Therefore, I use it as a <laughs> background. And uh, we will start uh, with a uh, description of what it is really a social bot. And this definition comes from uh, Amazon. Uh, Amazon, uh, and I will talk about it a little bit later, uh, organized a competition for academic teams and part of the competition was a definition of what the teams are supposed to build. And uh, they uh, used the name SocialBot. So uh, as the name suggests, uh, the bot should be very social and should talk about uh, the uh, very frequent or popular topics such as uh, sports, uh, movies, uh, TV shows, uh, probably politics, uh, celebrities, etc., etc. And uh, there was uh, the, the main task behind this competition was uh, to challenge the teams uh, to be capable to carry an interesting talk for uh, 20 minutes. The team who would uh, be the first uh, test it on several customers and the customers would keep conversing for longer than 20 minutes, will get the grand prize, which is one million of US dollars. These days uh, we are approaching uh, several minutes. Uh, sometimes we get over 10 minutes, so we are still far away, but uh, it's not a simple task because uh, the bots, uh, as they are tested in this competition, don't have memory. So they don't know about the speaker anything. They don't do profiling or we cannot do profiling. Like, remember, this guy has a sister and this guy likes uh, cricket or uh, any other uh, game. So therefore, the talk is uh, not very... Uh, social, because you can imagine if you get uh, in a bar and uh, there are like 10 
guys hanging around having already a lot of alcohol, how would you address them? And that's a very different task than uh, if you go, for example, to a playground and there are moms sitting with their kids. So the conversation will evolve completely differently. And uh, in both cases, uh, you don't have any background except of seeing a bunch of guys uh, being drunk and then a group of girls uh, talking about their kids. So this is the difficulty. We don't know whom we are to talk to. So this is the team. The team these days is uh, larger. Uh, this is like uh, one and a half year old uh, picture. And uh, here is uh, the challenge. Uh, it was actually uh, funded with uh, two, F, uh, two and a half uh, million uh, US dollars. And uh, uh, the next slide uh, which will follow will show you some very pre-recorded uh, simple conversation. We have uh, the Alexa with the conversational system here too, so we may try to later on give you some uh, real-time demo, but let me start the YouTube video. Alexa, mm. open Alquist. Mm. Hi, this is an Alexa Prize social bot. Is it you again, Andrew? Yeah, it's me. What a faithful chatmate you are. Um, how are you today? I'm pretty good, thank you. Hip hip hooray! I'm happy for you, Andrew. Let's chat about the movies. I was wondering, who is your most favorite actor? I like John Travolta. John Travolta, really? What an interesting choice. Can you tell me, why do you like this actor that much? I like the movies that he's in. Oh, so that's why John Travolta is your favorite. I had never thought of John Travolta when I asked you. Now that I think about that, I think I like this actor too. However, my favorite one is Harrison Ford because I love Star Wars. Well, I guess you are a good cook, right? No, <laughs> I'm not. And is this something you think about yourself or is it scientifically proven? <laughs> well, I think it could be proven scientifically very easily. I'm not a good cook. If it's science, I can't dispute it. Okay, uh, this was the video and now uh, let me very quickly uh, tell you what's behind the, uh, the conversational AI or what's behind Alquist. So on this picture or on this graph, uh, there is schematically shown uh, what are the major parts. Uh, on the left hand side, we have the latest Alexa and the Alexa is actually connected to the internet. So what is in this large uh, gray frame, uh, this is everything somewhere uh, in the cloud. Uh, typically when we use Alexa, it is located in data centers in North Carolina. And uh, from the Alexa, the sound goes to the upper left corner uh, piece or note, and uh, this uh, reflects or shows the uh, uh, automatic speech recognition, uh, which is a system converting uh, the sound uh, to text. And then the text uh, goes uh, further on to the system and the main part uh, is NLU, which is Natural Language Understanding or Natural uh, Language Processing Unit, uh, which is extracting uh, the major characteristic of the sentence the user said. And then we continue with a dialogue manager. The dialogue manager may get help from databases or may get help from a, questioning, a question answering system. And then we go to something which is called NLG, which is a natural language generation. And uh, this part of the whole system generates a text. Uh, which is a reply to what the user asked or to what was the user message. And then the uh, text-to-speech piece is actually converting this text to a uh, sound, uh, which is then played back through the speaker inside the Alexa. 
So the ASR as well as TTS text-to-speech, uh, which are in the smaller uh, grayish rectangle, uh, these are the two pieces uh, which we use from the Alexa. The other nodes or the other rectangles uh, on the picture, this is our technology and uh, our technology are uh, so as to materialize it, programs, and these programs are located on uh, Amazon uh, web services uh, servers, uh, it means uh, in the cloud. Uh, in, so as to be able to really carry an interesting uh, discussion or conversation, uh, we have to have some knowledge. Uh, so the system uh, needs to know uh, what is cricket or uh, what is uh, autobahn or what is uh, Prague Castle, etc. And uh, we have to get the knowledge from somewhere. So one of the major source of the factoid answers to factoid questions is Wikidata. Wikidata is a database which was derived from Wikipedia and uh, if you go to Wikipedia and you type, for example, Václav Havel, you can see a box uh, which is called Infobox on the upper right side and the data which is in this box, uh, this is all included in uh, Wikidata and we have access to it. Uh, we don't use uh, just uh, the Wikidata, we use Twitter, uh, we use also the data from Washington Post uh, for movies, we use IMDB, uh, for songs we use Last FM, and certainly a very great source of information, and especially a great source of uh, interesting facts or jokes or uh, etc. is uh, Reddit. So these are the major things uh, uh, which we include to our conversation to make it uh, interesting or to make it funny. Uh, here is a, a simple dialogue uh, and uh, the dialogue is here in a form of a graph. So uh, the graph is actually showing uh, uh, in this uh, uh, red, uh, sorry, in these uh, green rectangles of what the system may say and the blue rectangles are the expected phrases uh, from the user. So the whole uh, conversation runs in what we, sorry for saying scientifically, but what we professionally call turns, where the turn is always something what the system uh, at utters and then the reply it is what the user utters and this is called turn. So each turn uh, is uh, processed uh, with some kind of a dialogue which is uh, shown here. This is actually showing one and a half of a turn. And in between there is some uh, business logic, in between are the accesses to uh, databases and uh, lots of other things uh, may take place uh, before we can actually uh, answer. And as you can see, uh, in this example, we are expecting three different classes of answers uh, to actually be able to uh, recognize uh, what the user answered or what the user asked for, depending on the type of a turn. Uh, then we use the NLP algorithms, which are helping us uh, to uh, distinguish that. Uh, here are uh, some of the basics uh, and some of the terms uh, we use uh, colloquially for uh, actually trying to extract the information, trying to extract semantics. And the two major ones are intent and the other one are entities or keywords. Entities are reserved for, for material stuff and uh, keywords for something immaterial uh, like songs, etc. And the NLP algorithms are allowing us uh, to classify what is the intent. So we may have two sentences uh, which differ or which are showing the difference. For When I say, for example, uh, what is the weather, uh, it is uh, clearly I want to know the weather forecast. Or I may say, what's the traffic situation, uh, which is obviously something different than weather. So intent one, intent two. And if I say, uh, what's the weather in London, uh, then London is material, this is uh, an entity. And uh, if I say, 
uh, what's the weather in London tomorrow. I am adding another entity, which is time, and in this case, uh, it is uh, tomorrow. Having this information or having uh, or being able to extract this information from a question, uh, we can call a service uh, like uh, weather.org uh, on the internet and uh, request uh, what is the weather uh, tomorrow in London and uh, we get back uh, some data and from this data we create using the NLG as I have already mentioned a sentence which is then sent to TTS and the user gets the answer. So it looks simple, but believe me, it's not that simple. So here are some uh, other uh, technologies uh, which are taking part in uh, the process of uh, conversing. Uh, this is just uh, for your information. I wouldn't go now uh, deeper uh, into each of them so as to stay within the limit. Uh, this is maybe something uh, uh, what is very important because uh, all these uh, companies are very sensitive to uh, be politically correct. So it's impossible to use any profanities or anything which is uh, bad. And this is really very difficult task and we cannot do it. Uh, we have one funny story. It happened before Christmas when the employees of uh, Amazon were asked to uh, get their kids to uh, to the office and then they started to use Alexa and the kids were uh, talking about uh, uh, about Christmas and uh, suddenly uh, there was an answer that Santa is dead, uh, which is obviously very difficult uh, to recognize as an insensitive or politically incorrect answer because Santa as well as uh, that are uh, uh, reasonable or no problem <laughs> statements or no problem words, uh, but uh, certainly in this context, it's something which is uh, uh, not nice. And uh, this is probably the last slide, slide of the presentation. And uh, this is showing uh, one of the refries because the, uh, the competition, the Arquist competition, uh, always uh, uh, we were asked to do for a period of uh, three quarters of a year or almost a year uh, the social bot and then uh, at the end uh, the, uh, all the bots uh, which made it to the final uh, were used by uh, customers and uh, to make the final decision uh, Amazon selected uh, three uh, judges and three interactors. Interactors were people who were talking to the Alexa and judges were listening to and at a point where the conversation started to be boring, uh, each of the judges was asked to push a button. As soon as all of them, all three, pushed the button, the interaction was stopped and uh, based on this data uh, they evaluated the teams. Uh, our team, Alexa team from the Czech Technical University from he here, from Prague, uh, we were very lucky uh, because uh, we made it uh, uh, three times in a row to the final. So we were three times in a row uh, between the top three uh, teams, uh, twice second, once third. And this year uh, we are slowly but surely preparing for the next round and we'll see if we make it between top three again. So that's probably the whole story. Well, that's a nice place, I think, to finish. And I, I would like to immediately add on to that. Uh, a big congratulations for Thank your success you. from Czech Te Technical University here in Prague at, at these uh, um, Alexa prizes. So um, I want to sort of dive into certain aspects of the technology and then move on to discuss what the implications of the technology are and will be in the future. So one thing that came out of your fascinating presentation was that you mentioned that no, there's a 94% accuracy of speech recognition yes. in, in some of your systems, uh, which is better than most humans. Well, actually, I have to uh, say that the ASR we use is either uh, we don't do our own ASR. Right, the, the ASR, which is the automatic speech recognition, yes, yes, yes. is in 
is in South Carolina somewhere. Yes, exactly. So it's either uh, Amazon or Google. Okay, but let me just let me just let's go into that for a moment because every language uh, has various nuanced expressions, sarcasm, many different accents, uh, slang, profanities, which maybe they can't repeat, but they have to understand, I presume. Uh, so there's all these contextual aspects of language. How does your system cope with these? Well, the ASR, uh, that's only the first part. And uh, the role of ASR is to convert uh, what we said and what was picked up by a microphone and then over the internet fed to, to the center. And the ASR is converting uh, what is coming in into a text. Okay, so, so that if, input that input file, because when I'm speaking to you now, I've got vibrations of my vocal cords. That energy is producing a pressure wave, which is propagated along the molecules of air that go to your ear, where it's amplified and converted into a message your brain can conceive exactly. of. So it, it's not too different with your devices, but the pressure waves are, 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 are entering the system here. That's been converted into a digital signal. That signal is going to... Uh, South Southern Carolina, where presumably that sort of fingerprint, that signal is being compared on a database with... Well, it's not. Uh, these days, uh, most of these ASRs are uh, using uh, the uh, neural networks, and it's not uh, exactly comparison. It's more classification, and uh, uh, speech is composed from phones, but uh, the phones have co-articulation, so we use... Uh, typically triphones or maybe even more than triphones. And uh, based off recognizing these uh, very small pieces of uh, what is uh, coming uh, to the system from the acoustic pressure, we actually are able to recognize words. And it's quite complicated because if you uh, consider, for example, a phone dictionary, uh, then you have, uh, like in the UK, a lot of other people who have... Uh, uh, straight or non-English names like, I don't know, uh, Rajesh and Gopal Krishna, uh, etc., uh, Nahamu and uh, you name it. So there are many different. So we have to do uh, the record or the, de the, the best systems uh, today do the phonetic recognition and they understand even these uh, words which are not usual in particular language. And of course, languages are always evolving and new words come in, new ways of saying words develop. So I presume that the people looking after the automatic speech recognition have to be continually updating their system. Yes, uh, the systems, uh, the speech recognition systems are uh, repeatedly trained and they are trained on a uh, language which is being recorded uh, when people talk to phones or uh, at different occasions or uh, from coming from different systems. And uh, uh, the size of sentences you need are uh, ex uh, tens or hundred hours. So trained a system like this, it's really a lot, a lot of CPU or a lot of clock cycles before we get to a, a decent model. Okay, so Alexa has received these pressure waves, has converted them into digital information, pulsed that over to uh, Southern Cal uh, Carolina. Uh, that's gone through the automatic speech recognition. Then that comes back. Tell me more about the natural language processing. Yeah, the natural language processing, as I touched it very lightly, uh, naming the entity as well as the intent, uh, these are systems uh, which try to extract the meaning, which try to comprehend uh, what has been uttered. And uh, that's uh, the key issue or that's the key problem we are solving with our uh, system. Uh, we use uh, different algorithms. Uh, many of them are using also the neural networks. There are various types of neural networks. Uh, and uh, these systems are uh, trying to model what we call a natural language uh, model. So the language model is, uh, if I take uh, the simplest approach, uh, is a, a computer program uh, which knowing uh, two words knows how to predict or uh, reduces the number of possible words which may follow. Yes. So uh, this is uh, some kind of a statistic or some kind of uh, LSTM neural network or some other types of neural networks which are capable of doing this. 
and uh, that's one piece of the work. The other piece of the work is that uh, there are like synonyms, antonyms. So we represent every single word which is written from ASR with a distribution or vector which we call distributions. These vectors are 300, 500, even more elements. And uh, this vector space where these vectors live uh, is uh, linear and it's interesting that it holds some uh, parameters or holds some semantic features. So, yes. for example, yeah, it's so, getting but, but too it's, long. I understand. Well, no, no, not at all. No, it's, it, it sounds interesting. It reminds me of when we're at school learning about languages. And one of the first things you, of course, you, you, you do is you try to deconstruct any sentence into, let's say, verbs, adjectives, nouns. So it sounds very similar that, that in, in a, you're creating algorithms which are taking this verbiage and finding the intent, the entities, and then making uh, sense of those to formulate an answer afterwards. But OK, so that's some of the basics behind you know, what's going on in terms of what, what you're developing. But as you mentioned there at the end of your uh, presentation, the, the fact that you came very high in the, award, uh, in the awards for this, for this prize is because you weren't boring, <laughs> right? You, it, uh, you know, the, it took a long time for the, the, the adjudicator to press the button saying, I'm bored of this conversation. So what's the trick? How do you, how do you, get, how do you get AI not to be boring? Well, uh, that was also part of the presentation, but I might not have put it that explicitly. Uh, we try to find what is uh, interesting for people having access uh, to these social networks, uh, such as uh, Twitter or Reddit, uh, where people are trying to discuss something what is uh, what they like. So you're suggesting that it's, it's, con it's about content? That's correct. It's about content. It's not about style so much. Well, it is also about style. Certainly, if, uh, I don't know, some famous uh, uh, player uh, says some joke, uh, uh, he knows how to really put it so as people exactly. really laugh. And I think but there's many of the, the most famous orators that have ever been. I think they're... they're the biggest thing in there, the reason why is they're so famous is their skill of their use of language, Absolutely. Their, their command of language. Absolutely. So it's not necessarily about the information contents, but it's their skill at using language in an, an aesthetic way. Yeah. And, and I did notice how when, when speaking to Alexa that there's often, sh she uses um, uh, ways of, of, of language that uh, support what you've just said, to congratulate you. And, and you can see she's trying to charm you, which uh, reminded me of, I was thinking that that might be a, uh, a very much something which is, um, you know, one of the goals of, of, your, of your work. Yeah, we do it partly because uh, the TTS includes something which is called SSML, which is a speech synthesis markup language. And this uh, allows us to uh, command prosody where prosody is uh, the melody of voice. Uh, we can also do stops, like, you know, to point out something or emphasize certain words or uh, change the pitch, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we can do many things, but it's still not enough to imitate uh, famous stars. Okay. Uh, before coming on to some questions we're receiving uh, from, our, um, from our viewers and, and audience at home, uh, let me let's talk a bit about the implications of this technology looking into the future maybe your presentation did allude to what are the current yes. and, you, and you even mentioned you were quite surprised by the actual uh, the rank you know what what this technology is currently being used for so you've discussed you've already mentioned some of what are the roles of this technology is in currently in society where do you think that's going how is this going to develop where are we going to use this more and more well, uh, in the nearest future, or this is already happening, uh, we will be have a much richer conversation, for example, in our cars, uh, because uh, their eyes and uh, hands are busy, and uh, natural language is the only way how to communicate. So I can really envision a car, you open the door, and the car would say, how are you today, Mike? Everything is going well. Yesterday you were sad, but uh, today I tell you a joke and it will be a fine day for you or something of that nature. Then you would say, uh, but today I have to go 
uh, to this and that location and the navigation will be set, etc. And uh, going up, uh, the system may say, but uh, Michael, did you know that uh, there is a castle from the 14th century, etc., and you may discuss details. So there will be some sort of entertainment as well as uh, giving you some education, and that's definitely uh, what we will see soon. So I I'm going to have a friend yes. in the car. Yes, absolutely. And this, this friend's going to know me. It's going to know, it's going to be in sync with my calendar. Yes. It's going to know, this morning you would have known that I've got a meeting with you this evening. It could have suggested to me things I could listen to or Absolutely. watch to to, to Absolutely. make our discussion even more interesting. Absolutely. It's going to know, it's probably synced, fully synced with my social media. You know, it's all about what I like, what I do, what I don't like. I can tell you, like, uh, Michael, this... I suppose you go to visit your sister last time. You bought a bunch of flowers Better buy in this time. florist. Uh, so do you want to stop there again? Yes, yes. Well, but I can also, so it's a friend. Will this friend, can we trust our friends, these AI uh, friends? Well, would, would it be easy to, to, for other people to gain information about me through my uh, AI friend? Well, uh, with car, it's maybe not that sensitive, but uh, we can imagine that uh, we would have uh, digital therapists and the digital therapist will create your psychological model or psychological profile. And there are information which we really don't want to share with anybody except our doctor. And uh, clearly there are these days already regulations or maybe not already regulations, but suggestions and uh, the, the applications are uh, inspected or uh, tested. Uh, whether they allow to erase uh, the data, whether they are like HIPAA compliant or GDPR compliant. So there are many uh, different standards uh, the application have to meet so as they uh, be, can be offered to users. And certainly uh, privacy is uh, top of the concerns and it's being, you know, okay. many times discussed and it's hot topic. When I've got three young children, when, when children learn to, to speak, um, they of course improve with practice. And the, the amount of time they spend speaking to their parents, the, their, they increase their, their knowledge of, of a language and their capability to use that language. Is it the same with these AI systems? Do, do, they, do they gradually get better and better as they use this capacity more and more? Well, the field of artificial intelligence is these days uh, dominated, or this is this is the only sort of algorithms we have at hand are is machine learning, and machine learning is nothing else than having a, a really large number of examples, and uh, the algorithm or the mathematics which is behind is actually trying to extract the information from these examples. And once uh, we feed uh, to the algorithm something the algorithm hasn't seen before, it tries to find uh, to which class of what has been taught or what has been trained, uh, which class is the nearest one. And this is typically an output of a classifier. Yes. So there is a process of learning. Because I, I, I asked, um, you know, when, when thinking about this subject, I was speaking to a friend of mine who is a professional translator of Czech into English, English into Czech. And he uses software now, which is which does learn. So and it learns in a sense that um, it gets used to repetitive sentences that are being used. It understands the context in which they've been used. And it learns how to get better and better and better, picking the right words, the right sentences. In, and I think in many ways, as people's language improves, it improves in the sense that their, their articulate nature becomes better and more profound as, as, you, as you use the language more. So I'm looking forward to you know, listening to devices and, and hearing that development. Well, uh, what you've mentioned is not just part of a special software for translators. Uh, it is now part of editors or part of our emails. So the system uh, receiving your email suggests how to reply. And since uh, yes. the system knows who is replying, it remembers as, as, as it is gathering your conversation, it remembers uh, what words you use or what are the combinations, what are the sentences, and based on that, uh, they suggest. So then you can really shorten 
the reply uh, up to hitting uh, the tap and then send it, uh, hitting enter and that's it. Okay, yeah, let's, let's turn to some questions we're receiving here. So, um, the first one, good evening. How fast is the development in conversational AI? Do you expect that Alquist to be much different in five years' time? So that relates to our discussion about the future. Um, they mentioned five years. I'll tell you what, let, let's, let's talk of 10, 15 years. Let's give you a bit more time. Yes. What's going so, to be happening? So, uh, 2030, uh, which is 10 years, uh, so... That's certainly, I hope that will be much further away than we are today. Uh, today. Uh, today we are approximately like before uh, 2000 uh, on the web uh, because the browsers and the uh, pages and everything on the web was uh, developing or starting developing or accelerated uh, uh, in uh, after 2000. So we are in the early beginnings of uh, conversational systems. And uh, I believe that we will do much larger systems. We will have access uh, to larger knowledge databases. So we would be able uh, to answer the sentences much richer. Today we have, for example, algorithms where if you use uh, just a sentence like uh, the car goes, and uh, we may have a neural network which is uh, capable of uh, making uh, the sentence much richer, like uh, saying the beautiful, strong, uh, nice car is going down the road and uh, maybe saying even very quickly. And this can be generated uh, by a system which was trained on billions of uh, words or uh, hundreds of millions of sentences. And this is already doable. And we definitely will proceed or we will make this richer and richer. These algorithms are research algorithms. They are still not uh, uh, ready for prime time because generating sentence like this uh, takes enormous number of clock cycles. So the latency is uh, long. Uh, but I think that in five years, because usually uh, the research goes that we have algorithm which is precise but takes enormous time. So then a new uh, group of uh, researchers jumps on it and make it quicker. Uh, maybe the accuracy a little bit decreases. So there's a, there is a sort of a, a payoff between, you know, you either have high levels of accuracy or you get a faster response. Absolutely, absolutely. So we're looking at sort of increasing that, you know, getting a faster, higher accuracy rate in terms of the question about the future and also the, the depth and the complexity of the, of the answers and the language. Yes. And so the experience is going to be far more like as if talking to a real human, I think. Yes, well, that's uh, the target. We'd like to uh, emulate real human, but uh, we are far away from being able to okay. emulate real human. Well, let's go on to the next question. So in terms of emulating humans, it seems that the question is about what percentage of people are, prefer the female voice when speaking to their devices as ah, opposed to the male. Interesting question. Uh, just recently, I don't recall where I read it, but uh, they, 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 there, was a, there was a quote that uh, five, uh, four out of five bots are using female voice and uh, they were arguing that uh, so as to forget the old uh, gender stereotypes, uh, that, uh, this was a commercial, they have developed uh, uh, genderless uh, text-to-speech. So genderless text-to-speech. I don't know how it sounds because there was no sample, but uh, obviously uh, as uh, the long history is showing us, uh, ladies are uh, nicer to hear too or uh, are more empathic and that's uh, part of uh, serving customers. So this is, I think, the main reason why to use female voices. I see, I see. Do you, do you have a personal preference? Do you, do you prefer to, to listen to uh, female voices? We have actually, our recent uh, systems are using uh, female as well as uh, male voices and uh, it's uh, we start to do some systems which uh, carry uh, such a dialogue like right. uh, you know ladies carrying on uh, the concept and the man is for example giving details or some kind of arrangements of this type of this type and i've noticed this often using an american accent 
As, as this is Czech Centre's London, I mean, I, I would, I'd prefer, of course, to listen to a, a British accent on that. <laughs> or or is, that, is that something we can, you can just pick? Well, you uh, no, you can, uh, the Alexa as well as Google has uh, UK versions as well as US versions, and they have uh, the Indian English, and uh, they have uh, Australian English, even, I think there is even Canadian version. So when you buy it, you actually localize it. Since we use uh, our, or since we have our algorithms in uh, North Carolina, uh, therefore we are using the American accent. Right. Also, regarding the future, you, you mentioned that there's going to be a big, um, in terms of conversational AI, one of the main focuses is in the car. And um, car manufacturers now often talk about their products, cars, as being the largest computers that people now have. It's going from being a vehicle to being an experience, uh, uh, a place where it might be automated. You're going to be using that time more effectively for working, for pleasure. So uh, conversational AI is going to play an increasingly uh, large role in that development of the car. Now, one thing that happens uh, often in the car is you're not alone, and there'll be several people um, who are involved in conversation. So my question is, do, how do you see it progressing this technology in terms of these systems being, being able to handle not just one-to-one -one conversation, but participating in a, a group conversation where there'll be perhaps even different accents, uh, different modulations of, of voice, different volumes? Will these systems be able to cope with such eventualities? Well, uh, today we have the early, uh, or we have done the early step, like uh, Google Home as well as Alexa, both of them, they use so-called uh, microphone arrays. And the microphone arrays, uh, this is a system where they use uh, multiple number of microphones and because of having the same thing as we have two ears so as to be able to localize where the sound is coming from. So similarly, uh, the systems actually understand or can find out where the sound is coming from. Right. So this is the first step. So if there were like two in the car, say, uh, there was a passenger and the driver and the mics are in the middle somewhere where there is a mirror, uh, then we would be able rec to recognize who is talking. That's first thing. The second thing, of course, is like uh, if we were uh, in a room and we were in a bigger distance uh, from the microphone, like uh, the microphone will be uh, for like uh, five, six meters from where we are next to each other, uh, we can use something which is called diarization. Diarizations are uh, algorithms uh, which actually based on the pitch or based on character of the voice can uh, distinguish between uh, multiple who's, speakers. Who's, who's, who's Jan and who's Michael. Exactly. Because when we, before we started, when we were having a conversation with Alexa earlier and you began, and she immediately recognized your voice and recognized you as Jan. But then when, when I entered the conversation... Yeah, the system is not that smart, you know. It well, recognized that's me because, because it's the, yours. the device is mine. Device yours. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's the illusion that it creates, right? Yes, exactly. And, uh, but when then I contributed to the, to the conversation, it, got, it, it assumed that, I, it still, I'm, that I'm you. Yes, yes, yes. So we're still away from that. But, okay, well, let's, let's, ask, let's ask another question. Um, can Alexa be taught humor? I mean, I, I began this evening with... Um, asking her for a joke, and she was successful in telling me one. Um, but what is the level of sense of humor that uh, these devices can have? Well, uh, certainly uh, they don't have any sense for humor. Uh, everything uh, what is humorous or what sounds like to be jokey, uh, this is uh, what is inserted by people. Because as I said, uh, we are only limited to machine learning. So we have to have a bag of patterns and the patterns are labeled like uh, yellow, green, blue, etc. or rectangle, triangle, etc. And uh, from these we can learn, uh, but uh, we have... Uh, uh, no idea about what is absurd or what is naive or anything of this type. But are, are there serious research efforts in trying to teach these systems sarcasm, if not humor? 
Well, certainly uh, people try, but this is uh, research it's and difficult. it's very far. What we can do these days, for example, is to say uh, this is a positive sentence, this is a negative sentence, and this is neutral. And we can also judge, for example, like uh, paragraphs. Is this paragraph positive or negative? But uh, just to give you an example how difficult it is, you would read a review of a horror movie, and it would explain the plot uh, full of blood and uh, you know uh, dead people etc and then at the beginning there would be a sentence but it's not really not bad movie and not really bad movie these are only negative words and uh, after all uh, the review may uh, or the review is concluding that the movie is good so it is very hard and it's very tricky uh, to actually do uh, the uh, recognition of what is positive, what is negative. Do you believe that it that it will happen? What's, well, what's, your, is, what's your confidence in that? Well, I mean, it seems to me this relates actually to another question, which I think is uh, you know a highly philosophical question. I mean, are, are, is this really AI? Is this really AI? Yeah, this is this is real AI because this is all based on the uh, machine learning algorithms, and uh, uh, definitely uh, this is already happening. And the fact, uh, or the example I gave, this is something what we don't know how to do, or uh, probably we would do a mistake, because all these machine learning algorithms, be it speech recognition or uh, uh, semantics recognition or uh, entity recognition, etc., everything is uh, not perfect. Uh, we can because, do it with this, certain I think the, accuracy. I think what the view, the viewer might be getting at is that for it to be true intelligence, then there has to be some sort of feedback loop, some sort of self-learning loop. Yeah, but, uh, so in the same way as children at the beginning also don't understand sarcasm. Of course. So, so of course. You, they, they, uh, they're able to uh, recognize They are able speech, to learn. They're able to uh, you know, understand words. And then at the beginning when you use sarcasm as, as an adult, they don't understand, of course. Then they notice that the adult laughs and then they explain, and that explanation, from the explanation, they learn, and they use their intelligence to actually then recognize the sarcasm. What is that human recognition of the sarcasm? Is it about the modulation of the, there's two possibilities, it's the modulation of the, of, of the voice. It's all. And also, it's the context, it's right? It's all. It's contextual. And also, you know, I can see you, so I can uh, use your body language, I can use your mimic, I can use your gestures. Well, will uh, these systems also use? Because well, yeah, well, uh, you can put cameras. For example, it is very hard to say. You know, if I give you a picture and uh, there will be like, uh, uh, f say, five pictures, and there will be persons, and some of them will be sad, some of them will be happy. And if I give it to you to label it, uh, is this person happy or sad? And then I use another person. I am sure that it won't be hundred percent the same. And that's the problem that uh, if there is a human in the loop and the human has its, uh, his or her background or the education they came through or the uh, social background or uh, many, many other things, so they may differ in opinions. They may differ how they express the things. They Even if I say a sentence and there will be five different people in front of me, in their mind, the sentence will be sort of understood or comprehend slightly differently. And these nuances, uh, this is, of course, very difficult uh, to embody into our systems. And uh, right now, uh, the science is at stage where we are trying to start to learn how to learn uh, because uh, the learning uh, we so far are capable of is steady, still very, very simple. And what you are talking about, this is a question of general AI and general artificial intelligence that's it's a composite. part of a. That's right, it's a, it's a composite thing. But, well, I, I've seen, uh, I've watched on, on YouTube uh, fascinating short films where they project into the future these, these hybrid um, uses of, of various uh, technologies including the ones that you're developing in conversational AI, but also with the kind of a, a visual AI that can uh, recognize in human faces emotions. Uh, they can predict uh, you know, the, the, the mindset of people based on, on these mathematical symmetrical analyses of, 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 the, of the face. 
Um, they can recognize faces and compare them to, to social media to actually find out who that person is and, and display information about that person. So in, in, these, in these films, they often wear some glasses where there's a, a continual exchange of information based on all these technologies together to uh, augment your understanding of, say, me. We, we meet for the first time in a bar by accident. And immediately your system informs you, it gets into my social media, recognizes my face, it gives you information about who I am, what I like, what are the most, if you want to sort of, um, if you want to get to know Michael better, these are the things you'd be, you'd be talking about. He likes to drink this and not drink that. He likes this kind of food. And so all these possibilities are there. And do you wish to enable these capabilities? Well, that was going to ask you. I think that most that people want, you. you know. Well, no, <laughs> would you? Would you? Is this something you would like to take, Alexa? Uh, may maybe, uh, maybe inside uh, the company, uh, but uh, limited to the knowledge of the company, because uh, what you have been suggested, this is like... Uh, huge invasion to privacy. Um, well, it means so it's, it's an augmentation of you yourself, so that you, you've got like this almost a, a second you that can, that can feed you with information that at a, you know, at, at a touch is, is, has got all access to the internet of everything, is extremely, within, within milliseconds, can, can find out whatever factual information you need, can, can access information which can be extremely interesting in, uh, to, to you. you know, that's quite a, a powerful well, thing. Uh, certainly, uh, what you are describing is something like a digital twin. And uh, obviously, uh, we see this uh, in literature. And if you go back uh, in the history, like 68, there was this uh, 2001 a Space Odyssey from Kubrick and Clark and uh, lots of the things uh, that time uh, were envisioned are already in place but yes. the whole uh, the computer we are still far away of the capabilities of the computer so definitely uh, people think about these uh, problems or think about future and uh, we have uh, better and better predictions uh, but uh, and of course uh, all this is uh, still boosted by the social media and press uh, where people are uh, very much overestimating what we know today uh, but I certainly agree with you that uh, the vision you have described uh, that's something uh, which we may have um, I don't want to say soon, but uh, the profile, uh, like uh, some companies are building uh, of us, uh, contains a lot of things. Uh, you might be surprised that uh, uh, some of these companies uh, will know how many brothers, sisters you have where you live. They definitely know where you live. They definitely know where you work. Because when you get to the car and turn on Google Maps, uh, they, they tell you uh, today you have to take a different road going to work because they know that you go to work uh, every day 7.15 and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this is already happening. Unleash it uh, in the way as you are explaining, uh, that's another step because uh, this data uh, in some form or in a limited form exist. But certainly in the future, we can uh, look at these health applications where we will have the context, which is the history, location, time, habits, and millions of things uh, which put together the context. And based on that, uh, having access to uh, huge data of this type, uh, we can predict what may happen. So if we had uh, all the medical records of all people, we may find uh, correlations uh, medical doctors haven't found, uh, meaning that uh, we would, uh, for example, find uh, some symptoms of a disease. And because of having this in huge sizes, we may suddenly find that it was caused by something which never came up to our minds. Ladies and gentlemen, a fascinating <laughs> insight into our possible future. I'm sure you, you will agree. That unfortunately brings our, our, our time to a close. I hope you've enjoyed very much uh, our discussion, uh, Jan Shedevi's uh, presentation about the work here with uh, the Czech, um, uh, Czech University Alquist. yes, and at Alquist uh, AI. Um, Jan, I wish you all the best, all the luck. You know, I hope you continue to enjoy uh, the work you're doing, that the developments go as to planned. I'm very much looking forward to stepping into my cars of the future and speaking with them uh, and teaching them a bit about cricket, perhaps, or whatever <laughs> it might be. So thank you very much for your insights.
uh, thank you very much at home for tuning in and, and learning a bit more about uh, conversational uh, AI. I would like to thank also, of course, uh, Czech centers in London, uh, of course, the, the town of my birth. So uh, well done and thank you very much. Of course, Czech Technical University, where we're sitting currently and is the, uh, the university where you're doing your work, Jan, and to our partner, uh, Avast. So thank you very much for them. Do tune in on the 11th of November. We shall have the next uh, AI Science Cafe and it will be with uh, Mr. Tomasz Krajnik and he'll be talking about how robots are changing our living environment. So that'll be the next conversation. Uh, it won't be an AI conversation, it'll be a one-to-one -one with a, a real humanoid, but uh, <laughs> I'll look forward to that. So thank you very much. Do tune in next time and uh, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good evening. Bye.